Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. Thank you very much for your company on this Wednesday. I'm Peter Martin, and joining me in the studio, uh, delighted to say Alan Ruff has Tam McManus and Barry Ferguson to help him along the way. And here's what we're going to be chatting about. Diego Maradona, 59. Hard to believe, Ruffy. He was just a wee boy when he played against you. Yeah, 17 he was when he came on in the second half of the game at Hamden. Uh, you could see right away. It was just unbelievable, even at that age. And, uh, yep, uh, I think we all know what he's went on to do now. It's just un incredible. Yep, absolutely. Uh, OK, we'll talk about Diego a little later on in the programme. And if you're a Hearts and the Hibs fan, then stick with us because there's a chance to win a signed top from Scott Allen mm -hmm. and Stevie Naismith of Hearts. Uh, so that's all to look forward to, but lots to talk about. A full card of uh, Premiership fixtures this evening. We'll get the uh, uh, predictions from the guys a little later on as well. Here's what's on offer tonight. Uh, and quite a few football fans will be heading out into the cold night air for Celtic against St Mirren, Hamilton Aberdeen, Hibs against Livingston, Motherwell Kilmarnock, Ross County Rangers and St Johnson against Hearts. And uh, no surprise uh, that uh, Neil Lennon, speaking ahead of that game against St Mirren, has highlighted uh, Vakun Isav Beu has picked up an injury, so he might be looking uh, to get himself a new striker. Um, possibly. At the minute, Bale took a knock yesterday, so he's a major doubt for tomorrow. Um, so... Yeah, we're a little bit short there with really the only one currently at the minute is Edward, who's fully fit. So I was going for a scan today and we'll see. We're hoping he should be OK for the weekend. <clears throat> well, it's as simple as uh, as this. Uh, you know, Bayo picks up uh, an injury. Edward is the only fit striker. And you begin to wonder if there's any long-term future for Lee Griffiths if he can't get <clears throat> himself back to the top fitness that you know, had everybody raving about him. Yeah, I think it's it's just sad. You know, I think Lee's obviously has had some issues off the pitch. No one really knows, you know, at the minute if he's is he fit enough to play, is he fit enough to be on the bench? He's not been involved in any squads for, for three or four weeks. He came back at the start of the season and he looked he looked lively, he got he got himself a goal. And uh, you know, I think Dunfermline started in the cup and then he's kinda of disappeared since then. So I don't see the issue, uh, what's happened <coughs> to Lee, but Celtic if if Neil's talking about you know, Bayo being injured, they need the striker in desperately because we just spoke about it. Um, Edward is, is a huge player for Celtic. If he gets injured at all, you know, Celtic are in real trouble. And Rangers, although they don't have a, a better squad overall than Celtic, are certainly stronger in the striker department. Yeah, uh, and of course Celtic have just released the news that James Forrest has signed a new deal for <coughs> 2023. So uh, good news, and I think James, you know, earlier on the season he was in blistering for him, and I think he's managed to keep a level of consistency that Neil Lennon is looking to keep him long term. Yep, you just mentioned that. That's the thing that that's jumped out at me over the last two or three years. His his level of consistent performances have been really high and. It's great news for uh, the Celtic fans. Uh, another thing as well, not just his good wing play, he's starting to put the ball in the back of the net as well, um, which makes a, a massive difference. But he is one of the key players for Celtic going forward. And of course, uh, Scott Brown, everybody's <coughs> been talking about him in 12 years at Celtic. The manager was raving about him. And Brown himself, the Celtic captain, is hoping a win against St Mirren and just make sure they keep winning up until the international break. I think for us, and we're trying to improve in every game, to be perfectly honest. And the way we're playing now, it was a great result against Aberdeen, great result against Ross County, and it was a great performance against Lazio as well. So we need to make sure we maintain this forum and we keep going because it's coming into an international break in two weeks and you know what happens, the lads are going away, and you never know what happens on international duty. But uh, we're in a great place now and we want to maintain that forum as long as we possibly can. Ruffy, prediction, Celtic St Mirren. I think Celtic will win that one eventually. I think St Mirren have got tighter at the back, but I think obviously when Celtic get the first one, I think it could be maybe three or four. 
Sam? Uh, 5 0 to Celtic. 5 5 0 to Celtic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he says it with such conviction as well. Yeah, you know, it's as that. if he was delivering the bricks at details yep. there. <laughs> I think Celtic will be full of confidence after that performance at, at Petodja. Three or four easy for me. Uh, Barry, what's your thoughts on I mean, I love it. Pundits are plenty here in the studio, pundits right across the board, uh, uh, and we love opinion. You know, uh, Chris Sutton says Rangers will implode if they don't win silverware this season. How do you see that? How would you respond to that? Yeah, well, I'll go with the manager. I think the manager will be putting pressure on himself and uh, and his squad to try and win silver. Whether that's the Bet Fred Cup or the the Scottish Cup um, or the league, for that matter. Um, but. He's got to win silverware. I think last season when he came in, it was his first season. It was a settling in period. I think he's he spent a bit of money during the summer. He's got a stronger squad and a better team. So the pressure will be on and he'll put a lot of pressure upon himself and his, his team to go and try and win something, which I think they can do this season. Yeah, well, uh, Greg Stewart <clears throat> uh, certainly is an indication of how strong the squad is. He is openly admitting you have to work hard even to get in the starting 11. Um, since I've came in, all the boys have welcomed me well, um, the coaching staff as well. All the boys, we, we, all, we all know our jobs. We're, we're drilled well in training every day with the, the coaching staff. So everyone now, it's been, I think, four months since I've came, and everyone knows and knows our drill. You certainly need to work really hard, um, or you won't find yourself in the squad. Um, but every, every one of the boys have been working hard, which, is, which has been good for everyone. Everyone trains well. Um, there's a lot of quality in the squad as well. And as I say again, the coaching staff have, have got the way we want to play drilled into us and the boys have took that, took that on board. At Dingwall, not an easy place to go. This is <clears> one <throat> of those games that we were talking about that Rangers have now on the road mm -hmm. uh, that will be a test for them. Yeah, I think it will be a test for them. I think Rangers, uh, over the course of Stephen Gerrard's Rangers career, have been very, very strong at home, both domestically and, uh, in a, in, and abroad. So, but I think Ross County will be a difficult game. I still see Rangers going up there. They've got a strong squad. You know, they can rest three or four and bring in quality. You know, whether they play Morello or Sod the Four, you know, you're getting a top class striker as well. So, I think Rangers will go up there and, and win by two or three. Yeah, well, uh, again, this is a Ross County side that showed their fighting spirit of the weekend, Ruffy. Yeah, that, but I still think they're going to be better at home. They'll be more confident at home. They've taken a couple of scalps early on, but uh, I agree with Tam. I think Rangers will be too strong, even though he shuffles the pack a wee bit. There's still guys to come in They want to prove to the manager that they should be in the team, so... I don't think it'll be a runaway. Uh, I, I think 2 nothing as well. Yeah, well, you're talking about confidence. Greg Stewart shares that confidence. We're going to prepare properly, um, just like every other game. We go up there, we know it's going to be difficult. They've came off a... They were getting beat 2 nothing at the weekend and they've came back, so it'll be full of confidence. We're getting a draw away at Easter Road. Um, but it's just, uh, it's just the usual for us, just to prepare pro uh, properly. Some, some, some games don't, maybe don't suit a certain player or a certain, a certain opponent. Someone else is the same. Um, the squad's big enough. We've got a lot of good players, different type of players for different games. Um, and it's, it's worked well so far. OK, from uh, Celtic's match against St Mirren and Ross County against Rangers, we are going to talk about the two capital clubs uh, and their fortunes since the start of the season. They're under a bit of pressure. Um, but just before we get into the doom and gloom and the nitty-gritty, uh, let's try and lift your spirits if you are a jambo or indeed a hibby. Here's a chance to win a signed top. It's a Hearts and Hibs special competition. Simply like, share and follow PLZ Soccer on Facebook, YouTube or Twitter and you're in with a chance of winning a signed shirt from Stevie Naismith of Hearts or Scott Allen of Hibs. Don't forget to state which one you want to win after you've hit the like, share, follow or subscribe button. Good luck! Yeah, good luck. Uh, there's a chance to win uh, a signed top, of course, uh, two quality players. Mm. And, uh, uh, you know, I mentioned Scott Allen and Stevie Naismith. Uh, boy, do they need those players to continue to try and keep their standards up. Scott Allen's been scoring goals. Uh, I, I think he's a top drawer midfielder. Um, but suddenly this team is just a shadow of its former self, uh, Tam. Yeah, it's, I mean, they've got a massive week coming up, Hibs. <clears throat> you know, obviously they play Livingston at home tonight and then Celtic at the weekend in, in the Cup. But I think tonight, Heckingbottom is under so much pressure. I think the Hibs fans <clears throat> have had enough. I think they're they're wanting him out now. I don't think there's any kind of any Hibs fans who, have, who see a future for him. So he's got to go out. He's got to win tonight. Even a, even a draw, I think you'll see a lot of more fans kind of shouting for <clears> his <throat> head. 
I don't think there's any chance, to be honest with you, of, of, of Hibs beating Celtic at the weekend. So I think they've got to win tonight, put up a good performance at the weekend, or I think Heckenbottom will be out the door. Do you think um, <clears throat> a win tonight and a good performance saves them? Yes, I think I, I think if they win tonight, you know, you keep you know, I think they're four games unbeaten, four draws in a row. All of a sudden, you put a, bit, a better spin on that. We were five games unbeaten. We've won my last game. You get beat tonight, and I, I think if you get beat tonight, they could possibly go bottom of the league. And if, if Hibs <laughs> actually hit bottom of the league, he's out. Uh, Ruffy, um, harsh mm -hmm. words, but that's the nature of it these days. And, and once the fans start shouting at the board, I think that's when you know you're just on the cliff edge. Yeah, uh, it's not the first time that uh, when the fans direct uh, everything at the board, uh, they make the decisions rightly or wrongly. Uh, I agree with Tam again. A defeat tonight and a, a three or four nothing against Celtic would be curtains. I don't think the supporters would stand for it. I don't think the, I think the board would have to. Uh, act as well, uh, so that's what they're up against. You know, they're up against the pressure of tonight and the pressure of the weekend. Yeah, and similarly, uh, you know, I can't believe that uh, across <coughs> the city, it's a hard side under similar pressure. Although Craig Levine, uh, ever one to highlight the injury problems, mm -hmm. has mentioned that he reckons with Jamie Walker and Stevie Naismith coming back, whether they get a, uh, you know, a game tonight, he feels they'll have 30 goals in them to fire Hearts up to third position in the table at some point. Well, the two players you mentioned, for me, are certain starters when they're fit. Um, so a any team's <coughs> going to miss them. Yeah. Um, but look, I go back to the performance against Rangers. It was decent. Then they go to Livingston, they go down to 10 men and they struggle. And then they're going up to St. Johnson, where they're going to be high in confidence after getting their, their first uh, result of the, the season. So he'll need to go up there. He's under pressure as well. It's a big mm -hmm. week for Craig Levine and the players. They'll need to go up there and get a victory. Because going into the weekend, I don't think they're going to get anything off Rangers. I think Rangers are going to win the game pretty convincingly for me. Have you ever witnessed, Tam, <clears throat> man, it's a situation where both managers in the capital have big league games for them and they go into semi-finals with people thinking, no, they'll be getting bulleted. I think both sets of fans are just sickened with the performances and the league performances. Uh, and I've never known so much apathy in terms of supporters going through to the games. You know, they've both handed by a lot of tickets. You know, and usually you go through <clears> to the semi-finals, I've been to Hibs going through to the semi-finals. You'll take 15,000 maybe through if you play Celtic or Rangers. I think Hibs will be lucky to take 10. Maybe Hearts the same. And they've just, as you said, they've just had enough with their, with their team. And, uh, and they don't see any way. I think Celtic and Rangers are so, so far ahead of both clubs at the minute. They don't see kind of any, any point going through because they don't think they're going to get a result anyway. Yeah, if it's negative stuff, do you see both managers, people calling for their heads? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Barry said it during the week. I don't see any chance of Celtic Rangers getting beaten in these, in these games. So I think it'll be a Celtic Rangers final. If it's heavy defeats, then the pressure just intensifies <clears throat> again. Yeah, incredible stuff. Hamilton against Aberdeen, uh, Ruffy. We have a situation again. We we love <laughs> we love opinion, but I have to take exception at Stephen Thompson's comment. I think mm -hmm. it was <clears throat> crass to say the least to suggest that professionals and he's been a great footballer himself mm -hmm. in, in Scotland to suggest that players lie down. The Aberdeen players, I just think, was bang out of order. Yeah, I think so as well. I I, I would find it difficult how somebody couldn't. Uh, would lie down, or uh, the, you know, you determine, you know, who was. You can say somebody is having a bad game. Yeah. You know, I, I played as a manager. I didn't get on me particularly well, and he was on the verge of getting the sack. So I threw a couple in the back of the net just to push him out the door. So. Yeah, yeah. Could you, <laughs> could you tell me his name, Ruffy? I need his name now. <laughs> yeah. No, what, I don't. What was going through your head, no, no, no. your head when Adair chipped you? When you're 4-1 down against Brazil, did you think to yourself, ah, I'll just throw the towel in here? No, not at all. Not at all. I don't think any is. I, I, I no, can't it's, imagine it's any professional footballer. You, you, you've got a standard that you personally want to keep up. So why would you? It's a team game. You wouldn't want to let your mates down either. So I just don't. I don't know. Can all have bad games and struggle during games. Some is more than others. Yeah, yeah. but you, you don't get a professional. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get a professional lying down. Yeah. Some, you don't. Yeah. You don't. Let, let me just ask you: What's the worst game you've ever been involved in, Ruffy? Where you thought, just get me off, just get me off. Eh. Uh, how long you got here? No. <laughs> it had to be in a semi-final, Hibs versus Aberdeen. And uh, at that time, you were allowed to bet. Right at that time, you were allowed to bet. And we all... 
all right. No, it's a quick, a quick one. We all right. decided we were 61 and we all decided to put 20 quid in. Uh, on ourselves, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was the uh, I was the person who had been given the duty to go in and put the bet on. So I'd duly been and put the bet on, go to the bet and slip, and uh, threw three in the back of the net in the first. <laughs> and I remember at half at half, at half time, Jackie back the Mara said, "Mike, he's up dead line. I see what you're throwing." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is brilliant, Tom. For one, honestly, for one moment, you're the look on your faces as you watch. Finally, oh, Ruffy is going to reveal something yeah. that he tells everybody off yeah. here. That was going to be. The that was story. a long time ago. No, oh, absolutely. And you were actually allowed to bet then, which mm-hmm. wasn't necessarily morally right. <laughs> Although, to be fair, if you bet on yourself. Yep. You bet on. The, I mean, a lot of players did it 60s, 70s. You know, bet on y- y- your a team. Lot, to a lot win. of teams did that. I, I, I remember. I don't know. You just wouldn't be thinking. I remember the, about twenty-five minutes before a game, there'd be players sitting watching the racing, yeah, in the in the pool room or in the thing. And that's just that's the way it was then. Yeah. Kitty money sometimes went on, uh, even when I was playing early two thousands or whatever. Yeah, kitty money maybe went on for a Christmas night. You know, so much and you to maybe back yourselves to win the game. I mean, never you never won. You never won it. Yeah. No. Um, never happened. No. No, so <laughs> their kitty was about twenty grand. Yeah, was two hundred quid. To be perfectly honest with you, I can't, I can't wait for the second autobiography because yeah. the first one was all fluffy. You know, the, the, the thing, second one. The, the, the thing I couldn't understand was playing cards on a bus, going to a game, and losing money mm. before that. I just couldn't get my head around the gang up the back, all yeah. betting large amounts of money, and then having to concentrate and. Losing that money and then going out and having to perform. I remember one particular guy. <laughs> he's, he's on the yes. he's 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 way. No, I just when I hey, said that. It was, it was Tommy Craig's uh, brother, wee John Craig, who liked to yeah. gamble and that. And they were, I don't know, they were playing three card brag and we were playing Aberdeen. <laughs> and by the time we got up with Aberdeen, he'd lost all his money. <laughs> he's lost his trousers. <laughs> He had to walk into Aberdeen in his underpants and his shoes because we wouldn't give him his trousers back. What's going on here? <laughs> Can you imagine the fans just as they're clapping them off the bus? Brilliant stuff, Ruffy. You've been, you've been blistering for him. Anyway, can, <laughs> from St John's Nars, I hope I haven't missed anybody. I, ha- I have missed someone at Motherwell against Kilmarnock because, quite simply, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to nick along to Fir Park. Barry, that is, uh, it's got the makings of a great game. Yep, that, that's uh, two good teams. Um, I know Mullow got beat last week against Aberdeen and it was a close one against Rangers, but I, I think that's a great game to go to. I <laughs> think that could be a draw, that one. Yep, OK. Um, listen, uh, he's 59. <clears throat> Ruffy was in goal when this youngster played, uh, I think it's 17 years of age at Hamden Park and uh, everybody was tipping him for greatness. Happy birthday, Diego Maradona. A uh, special, special player, uh, the greatest Argentinian footballer of all time, and suddenly Messi uh, last night, Ruffy, mm-hmm. scored his fiftieth free kick of his career. Scored two, put Barcelona back at the top of the league. I mean, to have two unbelievable stars. Yeah, we've already had a debate about the two of them, and every time we discuss it, one does something, uh, and then the next one he does something, and I think it's one big massive competition. I wonder if they actually read about what each other's doing, yeah. and they just say, right, I'm going to outdo him because that's the way it is just now. Yeah, you and I are of a certain generation. I think it's fair to say Tam and Barry are of a certain generation. Are you Messi or Maradona? Yeah, I'm a Messi. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think he, he's, both of them are fantastic, but I just think he just edges it for me. Yeah, Tam. I'm messy as well. I've never obviously seen a lot of Maradona, but I think the game's changing. I've seen some of the games Maradona played, and people would just scythe him. They would just let scissor him. They you know, did. I think the protection now the players get is a lot better. Maybe Maradona, if they had the same protection, would have been even better now. Yeah. I, I grew up watching Maradona, to be honest. Um, what, what a player he was, but look, Messi, he's, he's a phenomenon. He's unbelievable. Yeah. That guy. Better than Maradona? Yep. Yep. 
Okay, uh, there you are. It's all about opinions. There'll be people throwing things uh, just at the just screen. Uh, yeah, well, people throw <laughs> people throw things before he even opens his mouth on this programme. But that's the nature of the, that's the nature of this lovely country. And I have to mention to you uh, that thank you to so many people have come up and mentioned to us. Uh, they're not living in Scotland. They are uh, spread all over the world, uh, and they've been coming <coughs> up and saying how they enjoy the programme. So to Tony from Australia, it was lovely to meet you the other week there. Thank you very much for watching us. Uh, and so many others. Uh, you can follow us across all our social media on Twitter, on Facebook Live, and of course, over and above that, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well, the ever-growing football family on PLZ Soccer. So all that remains to say is thank you very much to Ruffy, uh, to Tam McManus and to Barry Ferguson, and from myself, Peter Martin, thank you very much for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.